What's crack lag and everyone luck sense here your coach of the Hangzhou sparkling area and today I am back for my week 5 battle versus JV coach of the Atlanta Victinis uh, Please go check them out in the description below. This link will be down there as per usual um, And obviously please check out Jack as I say in every video He's commission of the league You should check him out um, But regardless I bet our battle this week uh, JV has a very scary squad. He has a Blaziken, a Tabu Koko, uh, Ijirachi, several other threats. He has like a Vaporeon on Crocodile, like on Rock Dusk. There's a lot of things I have to prep for. Um, but me and my buddy Sohan, also known as the OP Jellicent, uh, ended up coming up with a pretty solid team. So, shout out to him as well. And I think. I did a pretty good job in like everything that I did do. So um my leading plan for this game was a Charlie Berry Zapdos. Uh originally in our prep we had prepared for a potential Coco, a potential Crocodile, a potential Lycan Rock or Jirashi lead. Um, we felt that all of these were very likely. Uh, rocks are solid against some Pokemon on my team, assuming no boots and stuff like that. So we felt like it was pretty uh, good to get up rocks, especially when Crook very easily knocks off stuff like Zapdos boots, uh, Tapu Fini's boots potentially, stuff like that. So, uh, I was pretty surprised to not see a crook here. Like, not the most surprised, but definitely made my plan a lot easier, because right now I could just go out into Zapdos, click Volt Switch, and get out. Charty Berry is free, like a rock. If you wanted to lead that for, like, rocks, I could Volt Switch with my Zapdos, uh, and get a vo slow Volt Switch into Mian Chao. So I could then kill with U-turn and stuff like that. Now he does lead the Noivern, which for me is a good matchup. Um, if he Toxics, that's not too bad. The Zapdos is pretty expendable. Uh, if he Super Fangs, that's also not very bad. I can get free damage on this thing. Uh, Hurricane doesn't hurt that much. Spectraco does not really do much to my Pokemon. So I felt very safe going for the Hurricane here. And the Coco does come out, which leads me to believe that this is going to be his Zapdos check for the rest of the game. Um, resist both stabs. He waves like the best move uh, I have heard. But this does do a decent amount of damage. I'm somewhat sp uh, special attack invested, so it makes sense that it would do a good amount of damage. It's a good chunk, so he's probably like a bulkier variant of Coco, is what I would think. Um, and a, a trend that you will see in this game is that I use a lot of my time. Um, right now I'm like already a minute down, I think, nearly at least. And it's honestly insane how much time I use in the earlier parts of this game, but. It is how it is. So, I am running really low on time, and I do just decide to go out into the G Sloking. It scouts the Toxic Play, it scouts the U turn, it scouts Thunderbolt damage. I essentially just scout what type of set this uh, Coco is, and he does end up going for the Toxic on Zapdos, which is really good for me because this gives me free positioning. Um, now, obviously, there's no way the Coco would stay in here. And the logical answer to G Sloking would seem like the Jirachi. So, I do just go for the foul play here. I think Psychic would have been better. Um, as it would have still shown me like what Jirachi said he could have been. They would be like leftovers or like any sort of item. Uh, like a barrier or like a weakness policy perhaps. But we do foul plant in the Noivern, which obviously doesn't do a lot of damage. Here I debate going for the Sludge Bomb or the Psychic. And I think I end up going for the Psychic. Or maybe 
maybe I go for Sludge Bomb once and then go for Psychic. I don't exactly remember. Um, but as, as I said, I take a lot of time this game, it's in, in the early part at least. 30 seconds left already for this turn. Uh, I think I have like what? I have 8 minutes and JV still has only used 33 seconds. I did a lot of Calyx, I did a lot of like stuff like that this game, so. I do end up going for the Psychic here just in case he wants to scout for the Sludge Bomb. Uh, just a good chunk to Noivern and gets a special defense drop, which is really nice for me. Um, I do just double out into the Zapdos here, I'm pretty sure. I figured that he might U-turn here, he might Taunt, he might uh, Super Fang again. He could also just Draco or Hurricane, and I felt like Zapdos was my best play against all of those. If he goes for a U-turn or a Super Fang, he could proc Static. And that is exactly what happens, he goes for U-turn, and I do get the static onto this Noivern. Um, now, out comes the Coco, once again, in a sec. Uh, as... My apologies for the on, but out comes the Coco once again. As I presume it wouldn't go for a Toxic at this point. Seeing as last time I showed that G Sloking was my answer, now obviously G Sloking has Regenerator as well, so it wouldn't really care about the chip that the Noivern did just now. So I do just end up going for the Volt Switch just to get that little bit of extra damage onto the Coco. At which point, he shows that he is Nature's Madness. Now, this tells me one of two things either he's like Nature's Madness Toxic Wild Charge. Uh, which is a crazy set to me, because Nature's Madness like Magnet Wall Charge could to it KO or could KO my G Sloking. I'm pretty sure, depending on like rules and stuff like that. Um, or he's like a bulkier variant with Nature's Madness Roost, maybe like Full Switch, something like that, Thunderbolt, something of the sorts. So, I do just end up going out into G Sloking once again. And I think I go for either Psychic or Sludge Bomb. I do just go for the Psychic, because Psychic from this range should kill. Uh, and if he does go into Jirachi expecting the Sludge Bomb once again, then I would at least be able to scout if he's leftovers or not, or if he's some type of other item. Which, I mean, he's really good. So, out comes the Noivern once again. Uh, it really surprised me that he used Noivern so much to do that on G Sloking. Uh, I felt like it was more valuable for other mods on my team, but he might have found it more valuable for stuff that I didn't bring necessarily, which could be very much so the case. Um, I do think I go for Psychic again here. Again, if he goes Rachi and I go for Sludge Bomb, I don't get any information out of that. So, I do just want to Psychic once again. I think he gets a little bit more HP back from Psychic, but at that point, you risk the Spadef drop or a crit. So, it was in my best interest to keep clicking Psychic here. I get health back from it. Or, well, I don't get help back from it necessarily, but uh, there's no downside to the play for me. Also, he can get paralyzed, which would also just screw him over. And he does go for Super Fang here, which is completely fine by me. As I do just get off a fat Psychic onto this Noivern. Now, this is where my prep gets somewhat interesting. As JV sends out D, he's it's communicating still. So. But regardless, my prep gets interesting here because all my mons outside of Dialga have a way to overcode his Blaziken. Cause I 
can't let this thing set up. If this thing sets up, I pretty much just lose. Like, Thunder Punch and Terrain a plus two, Poison Jab a plus two, they will just have a chance to kill my Feeny. So I do just have to click buttons every time this Blaziken comes out. As I do just get the Psychic off on, or as the Blaziken does get the Flare Blitz off and kills the G, uh, G Slow King. And it takes a fat load of recoil, it's really nice for me. Um, I think I do go out into either Mudsdill or Zapdos in the end. Do I go out into Feeny? I do. I thought I went out into Mudsdill or Zapdos, but... Uh, Feeny is my play here. As I think he... Might go into Tangros? I don't exactly remember. This game has been a while ago. I make the double, that's it. I figure, I bring out the Feeny, he goes into like Tangrowth or something like that. Or, in this case, Hirachi. Which is really good for me. As I do just get my Zapdos in for free. Now, this is really nice as... It's a good positioning for me. I, I am very low on time, as you can see already. I am nearly two minutes behind this guy. He's already made this move, I'm pretty sure. So. The disparity between the time is crazy. And you can really see that I'm not that used to Wi-Fi on this gen. Um, but this is also fun to see whether I can win this race against the clock. And I do just go for a roost here. I think it's a pretty safe play. Whatever he wants to do, I do just get to sit there and be annoying as he does reveal that he's toxic, which limits my ability to do so, but I think keeping Zapdos somewhat healthy was valuable to me. And I think Roost was 100% the right play there. I think I can go for a Heat Wave here. Uh, just to scout what he might want to do. Could be like protect, could be sub, could be wish. Any of the sorts. So, he does reveal to be the sub here, which is completely fine by me. I do just heat wave this and get a good chip. This chip is good for my Mian Chao, as this is one of the few mods that doesn't mind taking CC. So, I think that is pretty much fine. Um, now right here, I think I'm calking whether or not Volt Switch would break a sub. I don't want Zapdos to get unnecessarily low or anything like that, so. I think I check, yeah, I check what mods I have and stuff like that and probably decide Hey, I'm going to go for the Volt Switch. I think I realize as well, if I go for Volt Switch, I'm slower anyway. So I can just go into Mian Chao afterwards. You turn to break the sub if it doesn't break. And I will be completely fine for the most part there. So I do Volt Switch. And the sub does break, which is really nice for me. Which gives me a free... Uh, switch out into the Mudsdale, I think I go into. Mudsdale obviously threatens to draw you with EQ, and for the most part, I think getting the rocks here is completely fine. Uh, I don't think there was like a reason for me to make a different play. Or do I go out into Zapdos? I could also go out into Zapdos to try and bait out the Tangrowth. I don't exactly remember what happens in this game. As I said, it's been a while. I didn't have time to record this earlier, which I apologize for. But I do end up going for the rocks as more chip on the Blaziken is very nice. Getting potential chip on the Coco, very good. Breaking a like rock Sash, all that is really important. So I do go for the rocks here as the Tangrowth comes out. And I think I go for the Zapdos here, I'm fairly sure. 
as the tanker goes for not luck, I want to say. Maybe it goes for like lead seed. I don't exactly remember. Um, lighter, yeah, he goes for lead seed with Tangrowth onto my Zapdos, which is annoying, of course. It's more chip that builds up with, along with Toxic. So, and the Zapdos is now on even more of a timer. Still 120 health, which is pretty decent. Uh, and I do think I go out into or Volt Switch out maybe as the Kogo comes in, I think. I do want to point again to my time though. <laughs> I nearly have half the time that Jay has. Um, but I do think I go for. I might also go for Heat Wave here. I'm not entirely sure. But this does reveal that he is in fact a boots set on this Coco. I do get a nice little bit of chip, which is very good for me. Uh, and I think at this point I do go out into Mian Xiao because it's my one thing faster than Coco that can revenge. I think I just go for a CC here. There's not a lot of CC resists on this team at this point. Uh, seeing as Noivern died, Coco's at like 2% essentially. So I do just go for the CC here. I think Jab might have been a better play. Uh, seeing as I could have potentially poisoned this Tangrowth. But say he went into like Arachi to sack that instead of with Blaziken. That would have been bad. Say he went for Taiwan for CC and he does go into like Rachi to sack that and goes into Blaziken again. It could also be a little annoying depending on what set he is. So I do just go for the CC. I get a nice chip on this Tangrowth and I do just go back out into my Zapdos, which to me is completely fine. Goes for Lee Cheat again. Again, it's more chip on the Zapdos, but it doesn't really matter that much. I think I just go for a Heat Wave here, if anything, uh, to cover the play into Coco. I, again, I'm not too sure if I do make that exact play, but I feel like that is the play I end up making, yeah. I do go for the e wave here. It covers both the Tangrowth staying in as it's shown not to be a Sold Vest. It covers random Spadef Koba Berry. There's no reason to bring that, but it covers it and it's more accurate than Hurricane as well, of course. It covers the Coco. It covers a potential Rachi coming in. It covers a lot. So I think e wave was my best play there. It kills the Coco, which is very good because that's. That's the last fighting resist down. Uh, it didn't get an opportunity to roost, so Mian is looking really good here for the end game. And out comes, I think, the Lycan Rock at this point. Right? Please? Yeah. So, as I said, out comes the Lycan Rock, which at least I know will not have a sash. It does not have boots either. So, at this point, I think I just let my Zapdos go down. There's no reason for me to keep it around. Uh, if he goes for an Acel Rock, I do actually live that with my Charity Berry at this point. Uh, and he has a chance of Static. If he goes for Stone Edge, he can miss. So, Volt Switch does seem like the best play here. He does hit. Charity pops. But this is just going to die. <laughs> like, at that point, Charity is not going to save me. As the electricity also disappears from the battlefield, so I have no worries about my Tapu Fini. It will always just uh, be able to come in, set up terrain, and I will keep my terrain for the duration of the terrain. Now, right here, I'm thinking out the scenario of what I want to happen. Um, and what I'm trying to have happen here is have the Tangrowth come out on uh, and have my Dialga be sent out versus that Tangrowth. 
As you saw, my Dialga is an Iron Defense Body Press set. At this point, if I get set up, there's no Body Press Resist, and it would just kind of win. So right here, I decide to make the double out into my Dialga, because I don't expect him to stay in with the Lycarock on my Mudsail. As he does actually do that, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that play, but it was to call out specifically this, then it's a phenomenal play. Like, I, I genuinely can't fault that. So, again, Jay, if you call this play out exactly, that's fucking sick. Oh, he was a jackpack, right? But if you call this play out exactly, that's fucking sick. Great ass fucking play. Holy shit. If not, then... I don't necessarily agree with the play, but seeing that your jetpack actually, in hindsight, makes a lot of sense because you could just jetpack, uh, scout down to Mudstone and get in something for free. But you know what? Yeah, that's a good play, actually. But now, I do have to scout what this Rachi wants to do. I might go into the Mudstone, actually. It's either that, or I stand with Dialga. I go into the Feeny. Right, I remember. So, if he subs, I got no damage on Feeny. I don't think he would go for like an Iron Head on my Dialga. He would go for a Drain Punch or an Aura Sphere because I haven't seen moves yet. So, Feeny would be able to take that fine. It does end up being Drain Punch. But it covered that. It covered the Toxic play onto my Mudsdale as well, which now it's even better to go Mudsdale because I can't get toxic Um. And I covered the sub play as well because I wouldn't get any damage on my Feeny and I would be able to go into Mudstill the following turn without any chance of getting uh, poisoned. This bothers me because now my Feeny is 1 HP less than uh, full, which I just noticed, which is really annoying, but it is what it is. And I do think I go out into Mudstill here. Right? Past me? I, I do, no, don't go into Mianxiao. That's a bad play. Go into the mud still. Please, pass me. This is not a hard decision to make. Or am I thinking of my scenario again? I think I'm thinking of my scenario again. I do, in fact, go mud still. Alright. So. Um. As I said, I can't get status. He does go for an Iron Head here, which does a decent chunk of damage. I am a Spadef Mudsdale for like Grass Knot Coco and stuff like that. So, I'm not too surprised by that. I think I just go for an Earthquake here though. Seeing as uh, if he wants to try and scout for a sub, or he tries to like stall out terrain or something like that i think earthquake is my best play if he goes tangrowth that's like completely fine i don't really care uh tangrowth does not do a lot to my mud still surprisingly uh assuming it's like no boosting item no attack tangrowth obviously stuff like that but like a regular giga drain would not ko my mud still so i do just go for the earthquake quickly checking uh, how long my terrain has left, as I do want to be able to toxic this Tangro to make sure that the Alga beats it, to make sure that it gets into Mianxia range, all that good stuff. So, at this point, I realize I don't really need this Mutsu anymore. I have Mianxia to revenge Lightning Rock at all times. I need to get this into Lightning Rock range, I need to get this into the Alga range, because I could very well have like EQ or Focus Blast or anything like that, which would be annoying at first to break sub and stuff like that. So, I do just go for the Earthquake to try and get a little bit of damage. As he does show that he is Focus Blast. Um, now, this does like no damage essentially. It's like what, 50? It's like 20. That's like 20%. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> Regardless, I gotta. <laughs> I got an even sadder amount of chip on this thing, bro. Um, but this is all to essentially stall out terrain. 
as I think he goes for the Elite Seed here as I go for Earthquake. I think that's the play that happens here. I'm not entirely sure though, as I said. Oh yeah, there's one turn of Mist Terrain left, so I decide I'm EQing here. I'll Toxic the next turn. And at this point, I think I realize, wait shit, I have like no time left over. So he does lead seed here, as I said, which is annoying because that offsets like double the chip I do with Earthquake, but it is what it is. I actually want to see this because I didn't pay that much attention to it. Yeah, okay, so my earthquakes literally did not matter. He only cheated once. Uh, and at this point, I realized, oh wait, shit, I have no time. So, I start clicking. I already formulated the entire rest of the game plan in my head. So, I didn't need time. But I did, like, need time in a sense. He does go for knockoff here to get rid of my leftovers, which is completely fair. Makes dealing with this thing more annoying. Uh... But I do reveal the Toxic here, which is probably more annoying for Tangrowth than for me uh, losing my leftovers. So that's really good for me. As I do think I just keep having Earthquake. Right. So... He goes for Focus Blast here, I think, trying to see if Diago would come out one last time. Or just cover for the play in case uh, Diago wanted to come out, rather. I Earthquake. I have a shitty little bit of chip. Uh, he gets his little bit of Leech Seat recovery. Any move at this point kills me, I think, outside of maybe knockoff because... No item, and with like plus three or four defense, I just keep spamming earthquake. Uh, my mom needs to die. He does show that he has the Giga Train at this point. Now, I don't remember how much chip the Tangro takes at this point. Okay, so that is a good amount of chip, and I think I go into Dialga. Which I might set up a sub with. It's either I sub or I like iron defense or something like that. I do sub. Because if this tanker gets lower, or if I can beat it with the Diaga, then Mianxiao is essentially completely free. So I do just sub here. Which. Jirachi is <laughs> not gonna do a lot to me. I'm a very, very bulky Dialga. I do have my leftovers, which, with another turn, grants me another sub. So, I do just go for the Iron Defense here, since it will reduce Drain Punch damage, it will make it so that I can just kind of do whatever the fuck I want. As, I think this does break sub, but... I think the roll for that was like really, really low. It's either that or you have to have a lot of attack or something like that. So, it's a little bit unfortunate that that breaks up, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I do just get my iron defense here. So, at this point, I think I just body press until I die. I think I do that, yeah. Because my mentality was, if the Tangrowth comes in, I get good chip, the Toxic and the Rocks will also factor in. And at that point, Man Shout can just win. Uh, assuming this gets chipped a little bit by, like, Feeny, or by Set Man Shao. Um, if this stays in, I get a fat body press on it. Which, I mean, I'll take that too. Um, and with the leftovers and the plus two defense... I am actually healing enough to where this Drain Punch does not to hit KO me. Hell, I don't think it Flurry hit KO'd me. That's two. 
two Drain Punches versus my plus two Defense Dialga. And again, I just deal a shitload of damage with Body Press at this point. He gets Leftovers back, I get my Leftovers back. Unfortunately, mine are more impactful because I just do more damage at this point. So, I go for Body Press again. Either kill the Jirachi, or the Tangra comes in. I probably die to that, but I do get a fat body press off. I have fat body press off on the Jirachi, and Jirachi is going to die to this Dialga. Keep in mind, this Dialga started at like 80 HP in this interaction, and it still beat the fucking Jirachi. That is insane. I love this Pokemon. This Pokemon is sick to use. Um, regardless of that, now, I do think that Lycanroc comes in. Exactly so. The Lycanroc comes in. It's a little annoying for me. Um, but I do just body press here. I don't have a reason to go into Fini. I don't have a reason to go into Mian Shao. CC will always kill at this point. So, it's better for me to just let it happen. And... And go for the body press in case he wants to set up a sword test or anything of the sorts. Now I go into Mian Shao here, it's faster than Legon Rock, I can get a close combat off. If the Tangrowth comes in, it gets 2 killed between CC damage, rocks, and toxic damage. So I'm completely fine in that regard. Again, I'm taking absolutely no time clicking buttons in this game at this point. Uh, I do not have the resource of time on my hands anymore, so I do have to just click essentially um and i do cc here as he does switch out to like a rock i don't know if this was the correct play in hindsight uh from him because cc at this point just kills the tango with two so rocking helmet damage does uh stack up a little bit and CC here as well will kill the Tangeroth. Now, there's something I'm scared of at this point, and that would be um, hold on, because I think if my mind serves me right, he goes like a rock here. And as a response to that, I go into Feeny. Now, in hindsight, I don't know if I agree with my own play there. But I'm not too sure either. We will see what he goes out into next, maybe. He goes out into the like rock. All right. So my mentality here is I go Feeny in case of like a sucker punch or an Acel rock crit, um, or just like a sucker punch in general. Cause sucker punch into like a vacuum wave or something of the swords could be really annoying. Um. Or I think if he crits Sucker Punch, I just die because I'm at minus two. It was something of the sorts like that. So I did not really want to risk that and lose the game off of... I think what it was is if he Sucker Punches here and gets the crit, he... Um... I can't think of it. I think if he does that, I lose my Mian I have to go Feeny. And I have to take the damage anyway from this guy. Now, I think he just goes for CC here. Or no, he goes for Cell Rock, that's it. Yeah. Which does not do a lot of damage. Um, Again, that's good for me. I just Surf here. Maybe I could have reflected, but at that point, Blazing Crit just kills me anyway. So I don't know if I agree with this play in hindsight. 
I think I may have overthought it a little bit, but he was no boosting item, so Stunch wouldn't do that much unless crit, and if he crits any of his moves at that point, I think I lose, unless I choose the correct move to switch into. Maybe I could have gone Mianxiao Dare, actually, because my Mianxiao would have been a full and resist Stone Edge, obviously, so that might have been a better play. But I do end up just making this play, and I have to stick with that, obviously. The Blaziken comes in. Um, and I think I just go for Surf. Poison Jab with Adamant Life Orb should not kill. If he protects, I get further out of range, but he will outspeed. Um, I could Reflect to maybe live a hit with Mian Chao, but if he sets up an SD to try and win the game like that, then I also just don't win. So there's a lot of things I could have done better, I think, in this end game, but at this point, crits are crits. So if he gets one of those, I just lose. He does get the speed boost, he does outspeed my Finny now. As I go for Surf, he goes for Poison Jab, and he doesn't kill. So we do end up winning this battle 2-0. Um, like we have in the past few weeks, we've only really won 2-0 or 1-0. So, we do kill the blaze come with Surf. Very, very good game to JV. I think both of us kind of played the end game suboptimally, but... Especially in the mid game and the early game were really fun to play, in my opinion. They're really competitive, I'd say. So, good game to J. Next week, I think we face Trexo. And once again, check J out in the description down below. Uh, Trexo is the coach of the Portland Timbers, I want to say. We do play him next week, and he has a pretty scary team. So I'll see you guys next time when that happens.